This week on Here for the Right Reasons, there's some new girls in town and they are stirring up some drama. My name is Brittany. I am from Chicago, but enough of all that. I want to make up for lost time. But can they deal with the mean girls in the mansion? Oh my God, watch out for this girl. She is entertaining men for money. Plus, former Bachelor Ben Higgins gives his opinion on Matt James's women and the fears he had for the new lead. We watch it and we enjoy it. It's really hard to do it. Um, and so I was just worried he was gonna get robotic because that happens. Um, it happens when you get tired. You just start saying the right thing at the right time because it's the best thing to do. We've got that plus so much more on today's Here for the Right Reasons. Hey guys, Christina Garibaldi here with Us Weekly senior writer, Sarah Heron. Sarah, here we go again. Welcome to Here for the Right Reasons, because oh nobody knows what that show is. <laughs> yeah, who is Here for the Right Reasons? Who's left? I don't know. All I know is the OGs are not happy about these newbies. No, not at all. So let's break it all down in our bracket of roses and meet our brand new contestants. Take a look. I want a moment. Yeah, why is she walking like she hella owns this? I'm from Minnesota. You're from Minnesota? Yes. I haven't heard the accent yet. No, you'll hear it. I'll hear it? You'll hear it, I promise. OK, well, you look so. incredible. Hi. Hi, what's Hi. your name? Ryan. Nice to meet you. It's nice to meet you, too. I also have the privilege to be Miss Puerto Rico Universe. But what I want to tell you is that now I'm here to hopefully becoming the queen of your universe. We knew that these new girls were coming in. So what are your thoughts uh, or, or first impressions? <laughs> You know, it's, I'm so torn on how I feel about these new people coming in because part of me thinks it's genius for drama. Um, you know, the ABC, just um, Robert Mills, the producer, just gave an interview saying, you know, we're trying to give Matt the best chance to find a wife. He clearly connected with these women. And there is something to be said for he had a connection with a lot of them. But at the same time, are they setting him up for disaster? Because clearly other women, whether they're justified or not, are going to have their feelings hurt that he kept so many of them, right? Yeah, I mean, he kept all of them except one for all the new girls. So, I mean, yes, I understand why they were angry for these girls coming in, but they were just ruthless. They were so mean about it. I mean, we'll get to that in just a second, but I feel like Matt was like totally blindsided by all of this. He looked so nervous that this was happening because probably in the back of his mind, he's like, oh, shit. Everything is about to hit the fan. Like, what is about to happen? I just don't think he probably has never had any. Well, obviously, he's never had any of these curveballs because he's never been on the show. So he's like, I can't believe that producers are actually doing this to me. I know. I would just love to know, like, in a year from now, when he could speak freely about the experience, I would love to know if he felt betrayed by them or if he just thought maybe this happened because he doesn't wasn't familiar with the show. Maybe he doesn't know that this has never happened before. Like, never to this degree. You, you maybe sprinkle someone in or there, come come around, but not five new women, limo entrances, the whole thing. But it almost says more about the women he had left that he did keep four out of five of them and send to quote unquote OG's home. That's so true. I mean, he just probably had five minute conversations with these girls and that was enough to send those girls home. So yes, I would probably feel terrible about that as well. Um, but yeah, so, okay. So one of the girls, Brittany, this, I mean, we've been teased about this all season long that she was called out to be an escort. I mean, that is a big accusation if you don't have the facts to back it up. <laughs> I know. I kind of want to know more about this mysterious DM that Anna got. Because yeah. Anna, wow, really came in swinging and then also kind of took it back. Like she, I don't think she felt super comfortable in her role as kind of the villain potster, but also she couldn't stop. So she was in a weird situation, whereas Victoria would have owned that and, you know, really embraced that she had this, like, alleged tea. Anna felt uncomfortable, but then also wouldn't stop talking about it. But I don't really understand. Like, she just heard, they, they both are from Chicago and someone DM'd her this information. Like, there was no facts. Give me the, give me the receipts. I know. That is like, you know, I mean, and Chicago's a big city, too. So, like, <laughs> some, like, you have mutual friends. Like, you've never met each other before. Like, I don't know. So, yeah, so she was saying that, she hangs around with a lot of older, um, wealthy gentlemen, so she must be an escort then. <laughs> so. you, what did you think of Britney's reaction to it? Because part of me felt two ways. At first, I was like, oh, she's kind of being weirdly calm about yeah. this. And I was yeah. like, I would be freaking out, screaming, crying. But then I was like, okay, maybe she's not giving it any life because she's trying to be like, what? Like, she's literally in shock. Like, what are you talking about? Like, I've always had a boyfriend because she's young. But I almost think it made her look like 
she doesn't care because it could be true, but, or does she saying she doesn't care because she doesn't want to give it weight? Like, I don't know. I totally agree with you. I was expecting more of a reaction, more, like, I would probably be in tears if somebody said that to me. Um, but yeah, I, she just was like, I don't know, maybe, maybe it's true. Maybe it's not like kind of kept us guessing, but yes, I thought that she would be much more pissed off about it, but she did come in with a total amount of confidence. I mean, she got out of the car, kissed Matt right off the bat. So, I mean, maybe she's just like, this doesn't bother me because it's not true and I don't want to give it another thought. Who knows? Yeah, I, mean, I don't really know her that well, but I guess, I guess we're going to get to go know her over the next couple of weeks. But, but then we got to talk about the bullying in the house because it is on a whole other level. Like we've never, I, I, we've watched the show for how many seasons, how many years. I've never seen a group of girls go at it like this. And it's just mean. And it's quite frankly, I don't think it's really enjoyable to watch. Usually there's like one episode that gets a lot of attention and it's like, did they cross the line? Or was that, you know, a gang up situation? This is every episode. And I think maybe because I'm trying to figure out like, are these girls extra catty? I think there's something to that. But I also just think it's nonstop. Like usually you have certain episodes that people might think are boring because they focus on the love story and then other episodes that are focused on the drama. But this feels like so much and they're constantly cutting away to Victoria and whoever her friend of the week was. Last week it was Kit, this week it's Anna, you know, talking so much crap about everyone and Katie really being the only one who's like, you guys, like this doesn't make us look good. Like I have to imagine more so than ever watching this back, like must be humiliating for them. Yeah. Like I would be, in maybe some stuff were jokes and are coming off as serious, but either way, there's a common thread here and it's not nice. No, it's not nice at all. And we're going we're gonna to break down a little bit more of the bullying a little bit later, but yeah, it's, I've just never seen anything like this. It's like maybe that there's just nothing going on in the house that they needed to create something. But I mean, I kind of think that there could have been a ton of other different avenues to go down. Um, maybe by only... Go ahead. The only other um, potential, now that you say that about time, is since they're not traveling, maybe they have more footage of the girls talking versus like when they're at the airport. We never, they kind of eliminate that part of the show. Whereas like on Housewives or other reality shows, you see the travel. Bachelor, it's always like they woke up magically and yes. you play fall in love. So we're cutting out the travel. They're sitting in this resort. They're all like closer together. Maybe that's why like there's less separation and there's more footage so they're showing it to us whereas if you're normally like I'm sure girls pair up and you know gossip about the other women but if you're on a plane no one's seeing it I don't know True. yeah they're just constantly in their thoughts like 24 7 so they have nowhere nothing else to do but to talk bad about each other which I, I don't know but somebody that has gone through this before and he was on last night's episode was Ben Higgins right Yes, I spoke to Ben Higgins about his appearance on the show, that obstacle course, he had a lot to say about it, and what he thought about the women, and of course, Matt James and his concerns for Matt, who's never been on the show before. Take a look. This season of The Bachelor, we're going to see you on. Um, tell me a little bit about talking to Matt. What was his mindset like? Were you, you know, he's never been on the show before? Like, what were you going in? Like, what did you know you wanted to say to him? Did you learn anything? What can you tell me? Yeah, so when I had been able to speak to Matt about a week before filming started, uh, and I'd say one thing he did incredibly well was he reached out to a bunch of people uh, that had been on the show and, uh, and kind of got their advice or just like, what was their experience like? So I've been able to speak with him and I knew like his heart was a great place. I knew he's a really good dude who cared deeply about the process, knowing that, you know, women were going to come in and give up their time and sometimes their jobs for this. So I already like, I get to speak to most bachelors before they go on. And with Matt, it really stood out to me just how incredible he was as a human. Uh, I think my concern is that he's never been on the show and it's intimidating. I mean, if you've even been on the show before and you walk into it, it's intimidating, like the lights, the people, the attention, the pulling around, the long days, the long hours, the multiple conversations, like we watch it and we enjoy it. It's really hard to do it. Um, and so I was just worried he was going to get robotic because that happens um it happens when you get tired you just start saying the right thing at the right time because it's the best thing to do also when i when i wanted to speak sit down with him and you'll see tonight you know the conversation lasted a lot longer than they'll show mm -hmm. that just happens uh, i don't think people want to see us for an hour and a half just chatting um but i i really would just want to like reinforce into him that he is fully capable of this moment uh he has a huge and he spoke about it like 
he has a huge weight that he's going to carry on this show. He's the first black bachelor. Uh, and he's going to do an incredible job uh, post-show with everything he does. Um, but it is a weight that he's carrying. And he also hasn't done it before. He's not prepared for this. Um, but he was chosen because he is going to be incredible. And I just want to reinforce it in him that he is incredible, that he was chosen because of who he is. Uh, and the, the person that he is is a great dude. Uh, because I don't – like advice – like I don't know what advice I would give him. He's going to do this thing differently than me. He's going to – he's a different dude than I am. But I just – I really wanted to like – I wish somebody would have done this to me during my process is like lift me up and say like, you are fully able to be in this moment and be who you are, you are in this moment and rise above any criticism and also own any compliments and just stay who you are. The women are also obviously different every year. And, you know, there's been kind of a mention online or, or this like maybe a cattier group than other times. Um, so from a lead perspective, how do you manage like the drama and what you're hearing and also being able to, you know, decide for yourself who you want to keep around? Like how, how does that work? <laughs> yeah. Well, I would say most of the times on the show, when you have a very catty group of women, you know that The Bachelor is probably a pretty good dude. Same with The Bachelorette and the guys. Uh, because they're not going to bring the drama to the show. And I, I always appreciate that, right? You don't want a lead that, like, fires, you know, starts the flame and makes it higher. Um, to manage that, you know, the mark of a good lead on this show is not if we like them or not. We're going to like most of them. Uh, because they're wearing suits and beautiful dresses and they're going on lavish dates. We're going to like them. It's how they react to controversy and how they react to the drama. Like, what is their reaction like? And so that was one of my advices to, to Matt was just like, make sure you think through your reaction. And I would say the best way to do that would be to not dive into it. He knows who's rising above the drama. He knows what he wants in a partner. Does he want a partner? that brings a little drama to the table? Does he want a partner that kind of sparks the flame a little bit? Maybe he does. Um, but if he doesn't, then he's going to choose somebody that, that, that doesn't enjoy that either and stay committed to those people, like invest into those people. And as quick as you can start to pull aside the, the drama filled group, because they're not helping your experience. They're not helping you find your partner. Oh, Ben, still one of my favorite bachelors. <laughs> he always knows the right thing to say. He literally was just like, I wanted someone to hype me up and tell me that I could do it. So my job was to tell Matt James that he could do it. And what a week for, for Ben Higgins to give you a little maybe boost if you need it. Because Matt had a lot to deal with and he still does going forward. I, I, I liked what Ben said about you know, how Matt might just get very tired throughout this whole process and just kind of say the right thing and not really mean it, which, you know, it, you know, maybe it kind of makes you think and like kind of look back at other situations. Like maybe that's what they were doing. They're just kind of like, I don't feel like dealing with this drama. I'm just going to tell this girl I like her and just move on. <laughs> yeah. I, it makes a lot of sense. He used the word robotic. And I was like, oh, like that is because, and even some of the phrases Matt James has said are like the cliches, like everything you're coming up with. But at the same time, maybe you are, are so in that world that you genuinely believe some of the cliches mm -hmm. you're saying. Like, I think it's just such a mind game. Yes, it really is. It really is a mind game. Well, we actually did see Matt make one connection this week, and that was with the new girl, Michelle. And for me, it seemed like this was like the first time he actually kind of seemed at ease and like really enjoyed the date and really enjoyed his time with Michelle, which was kind of refreshing to see because... I want to see a fun side of Matt. Obviously, you know, this is probably the most nerve wracking situation he has ever been in, but it may be week after week. We'll see him kind of loosen up a little bit more. I totally agree. He seemed to totally let his guard down very quickly. There must be something about her that he felt like calming and relaxed, which is interesting because he has to know in the back of his mind by picking or, you know, going on a date with one of the new girls that the other girls are spiraling, which they were. And as always, we're watching them watch the date, which is like a very fun layer for us, but also makes me cringe again for them, all the stuff they say, and then they're going to watch back and it's like, oh my God. But yeah, Michelle, I mean, they were talking about how they're going to breed well within the first five minutes. Right. So I think we have a contender here, which then goes with, you know, if they didn't bring these new women on, like, I wonder if Michelle was in the original group, would she have been overlooked? Is it something about you know, a fresh face. Like there's so many factors that I don't know if it's a disadvantage or an advantage sometimes to right. join later. No, I totally agree with you. But you know, he, he did, they did seem to really hit it off. I feel like she's probably going to go far, but um, I don't know. But if the other girls have anything to say with it, she won't. <laughs> We're going to like throw her in the lake or something like that. But <laughs> I don't know. All right, let's move on to our cringe of the week. 
I mean, we already talked about the bowling a little bit, but it started when someone else had a tiara and Queen Victoria was not pleased. Okay. And so I think I should have that crown, actually. Oh, really? Yeah. I mean, thank you. Victoria. <laughs> Victoria. It's okay, Victoria. 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 The claws are out, man. Like, yikes. I mean, this just made me like want to cover my eyes and be like, I can't believe this girl really did this. And she was actually just on Good Morning America and spoke about it, right? Yeah, she, you know, has kind of insisted that she was being sarcastic, that her and the other women had a good rapport and people were laughing. And there is something to be said for, you know, The Bachelor. The sarcasm never translates well. Um, but it's a lot of, maybe that's in like group scenes and stuff, but when we see her have these side conversations, she's not joking. Like she is being harsh and, you know, telling people to leave and to go home and not in like a nice, funny, playful way. Like she's definitely not making it easy for certain women, especially these new women. Mm -hmm. But she, you know, is insisting that she, she thought she was going to be, she said, I anticipated being, being well liked and being received well. And I was like, you did? Like, yes. if anything, own up to the fact, like, yeah, I knew I was going to be controversial. I showed up in a crown. But she's claiming she thought she was going to be this likable, lovable character on the show. Like, what planet are you from? Like, I mean, where do you think, like, is that how, like, all of her friends speak to each other? Maybe, yes, in her friend group, maybe that does come off as funny because they're used to it. But she just met that girl who had the crown on, Miss uh, Puerto Rico, who is uh, absolutely beautiful, and she didn't mm -hmm. really know how to respond to it because she took her crown. And it's not like that's a play crown. Like, that is her Miss Universe crown. Like, she earned hers. She earned her crown. Like, get off of that. Like, I just don't know why she still has this perception that people are going to like her after this. Because I just, I feel like it's so embarrassing. I feel like, you know, it's kind of like you're shooting yourself in the foot for a very long time. And we've seen this, we've talked about this on past shows. You know, Corinne has talked about it, Olivia has talked about it, how life really is difficult for the for Bachelor vill villains after the show. I know, and that's part of why I feel so bad for Brittany, because if this is true somehow, that's not good for her life. And if it's not true, that's also not good for her life. And it doesn't really seem to be the time or the place to just make that baseless accusations on a national platform. And so Anna looks bad for doing it. Brittany looks bad for being accused of it. Victoria's stirring the pot. Like, there are a lot of women who, if they don't, you know, secure that Instagram following, I don't know where they go from here. I don't know where they go from there either. And, you know, we have to talk a little bit more about the mean girl mentality when it comes to the group of the women. And when they were sitting down and just bashing these girls during the group date, rather than focusing on their time with Matt. So take a look. Don't come in here and tell me you deserve the one-on-one -on -one because you do not know. And don't tell me oh, yeah. you get what it's like because you don't yeah. get it. Yeah, that's just another the thing of them just being ignorant. I just, I can't decide if they're actually here just to stir up drama or if they're actually here for Matt, you know? I think Ben says, you know, you kind of have to wean out the drama the first few weeks and then you'll finally see who is, uh, who is right for you. But I'm over it. I'm so over it. I will say yet yeah, two things. One, I loved the way all the new women handled it. They were all strong-willed. They weren't apologizing for being there because they shouldn't, by the way. It's not like it was their choice to hide away for three weeks. Right. But also, they, right? But they also, they came out, they weren't apologizing. They were, they were, you know, gracious. They were trying to be nice. They weren't, you know, acting obnoxious until they were like approached in a certain way. So I thought they did a great job trying to, you know, not be like annoying, but also be like, I have every right to be here too. Like, I didn't plan this. Like, I'm not out to get you. Right. Um, but also it does, yeah, I mean, the, the thing about the drama is it brings, sometimes the show brings out the worst side of you. Mm -hmm. And if you're looking for a wife and you, you wanna see the good, the bad, and the ugly. So if Matt is smart, you know, hopefully everything he's watching back now makes him feel confident in his choice and he didn't end up with one of these women where he would be devastated to see how she was acting. Right, imagine if you're sitting on the couch with like Matt and like you're one of those Anna. girls and you're like, uh, that I, that wasn't me. I don't know what you're, I don't know what you're watching, but you know, usually I hate when girls go to the lead with things because you know, they're just kind of causing drama. But you know, for the one time I actually agree with Katie and she, I think she handled it really well and been like, I'm just bringing this to your attention. I think you really need to kind of, stop this immediately because it's just going to get worse and worse and worse. I know it actually worked in her favor getting like the hug and the more time, but I don't think that's why she did it. I, cause she yeah. really was just like, I've done everything I can. She wanted to like be the peacemaker. Just, I think it's her personality. She must naturally just want like everyone to get along. And I feel like that's something 
like in the house you think you just don't want to live in like where everybody walk you don't know what someone's like whispering about you so I totally get her her desire to make this a little bit more of a peaceful living environment and then of course it did you know give her a little bit more time with Matt which was a bonus but I genuinely believe her intentions of usually when they go to them for the drama I'm like okay they're just stirring the pot they want to look a good one but I genuinely believe Katie is like I'm living in hell with these women and I need you to step in because they don't listen to me I've tried to just be like calm down you guys I feel like Maybe they've even cut out Katie being like, you're going to have to watch this. Like, this is going to air, but that's like too breaking the fourth wall. Right. But I, I feel like that's kind of her message. She's like, why are, why are we doing this? Be classy. Yeah, seriously. You are going to ruin your life. Like, stop speaking. Just count to 10. <laughs> stop speaking. Think, think like two seconds longer. Not even 10. Like two yeah. seconds. <laughs> but I wonder how long Victoria is going to be around because Robert Mills did speak out and said that, you know, she is a contender and she could be here for a little while, which blows my mind. Um, but, but again, Matt's not seeing what we're seeing. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting. You have your Courtney Robertson, who was the villain who won the show. You have your Corinne, who made it to final four. Um, and then you have other villains, you know, who get left on a two-on-one. I think with Victoria, it could, I, I, I don't know, it could go on. I'm, I'm predicting maybe more of a two-on-one route for her. With It could be with anyone, who knows? Right. Um, <laughs> but I don't know. I mean, I, it's kind of shocking. They also, I hate that, like, even this episode started in the middle of, like, a night portion of a group date. We didn't even yeah. see the date portion. Like, this timeline is all over the place. And I, I need my rose ceremony at the end of the episode. It's really annoying. It's really annoying. I need some closure yeah. after every single week. All right, well, let's move on to our Where Are They Now segment. And we thought that we would update you on what Ben Higgins has has been up to since The Bachelor, and it's been quite a lot. <laughs> yes, it has. Of course, we all know he got engaged to Lauren Bushnell on his finale. They were together for about two years before they ended their engagement. He had a brief stint on The Bachelor Winter Games, which was, you know, quite the show. Yes. And now he's happily engaged to Jessica Clark. Yes, yes. So they met, I think they met on Instagram, right? I think so. There might have been like a mutual friend or something, right. and then he DM'd, and he was just like impressed with her charity. They had a lot in common, religion. Like they, he knew that they were like gonna get along or something. Yeah, he's been talking. I think since like day one that he met her, he's like, "This is it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna marry her." And he told you that they are marrying, marrying this year, no matter what happens, right? Yes, I, you know, they were a, a coronavirus couple that you know the wedding plans were scrapped. Um, I know her brother like plays baseball, so they can only do certain times of the year, and they. Should she wanted a big wedding and they're also not living together until they're married they're not sleeping together until they're married so ben told me that 2021 we will get married period end of story if it's not the big fairy tale wedding we'll find a way to do that later but legally these two and in front of god and whoever can be there they will become man and wife good for him good for him the man is on a mission and um he is coming out with a brand new book too yes he has a book coming out next week and you guys, I don't want to give it away, but there are things about Ben Higgins that I certainly did not know. And it, it was actually, it was not like a tell all juicy thing. There's a few nuggets about Lauren, which was interesting. And she read the book and approved the chapter, which I also find fascinating. But there was a lot of stuff about Ben's background and like growing up that I had no idea. And it was, it was kind of nice to, you know, he, he was the perfect Ben and there's some part that's part of him, but you know, no one is that perfect. Right. Even Ben, even Ben Higgins. Yeah. <laughs> that perfect. Well, I'm excited to read it and excited to see the rest of your interview. So if you want to check that out, make sure you head on over to usmagazine.com and listen to Sarah's podcast here for the right reasons this week, Jaden Tanner. Yes, Jaden Tanner. I can't yeah. wait. We have finally another couple that's going strong. We got to mm -hmm. figure out the secret. We've lost so many couples. Oh we didn't even talk about I know. It's Sarah and Dale. Dale. I mean, that is just turning into a situation. <laughs> and she's like on the walk, still flashing her ring. Like, I think Claire thinks they're gonna get back together and Dale is like already, he's, I feel like, he's very moved on very quickly. Very moved on very, very quickly. Yeah, he is talking all about it on his Instagram. He is laying it all out there. He doesn't really care. So, or no, I won't say he doesn't <laughs> really care, but it's, he it's is- It's safe to say he was, he was ready. She maybe wasn't ready to end it. And he had to pull the plug is what I'm getting from everything we've heard. It's a very awkward situation. I do, I feel really bad for Claire. Like she wanted to make this work so bad, but I don't know. <laughs> Maybe she'll give it another try. We'll see. Oh, please, no, I don't want that. I don't want to put, fine, we can find her love some other way, just not on the TV screen. Not on The Bachelor. All right, well, that's it for this week's episode of Here for the Right Reasons. Make sure to check back every Tuesday afternoon where we will recap all things Bachelor. Sarah, thank you very much. Thanks, Christina. All right, bye, guys. <laughs> <laughs>